Two of the goals laid out by Governor Mary Fallon when the legislative session began this year were repairing Oklahoma's deteriorating capital and passing a measure to cut the state's income tax. With a legislative deadline looming, lawmakers this week approved a bill addressing one of those issues. The other remains a work in progress and a source of friction between the House and Senate. As the week began, two measures to fix the state capitol still awaited action in the House and Senate. Thursday was the deadline for action to be taken, or the bills would be dead for the session. The House moved first, taking up the measure that originated in the upper chamber. Member Senate Bill 2044 is the um, capital bond bill. I think you might have heard of it. The Senate bill called for a $160 million bond issue to pay for repairs. Bond issues have drawn little support in the House, with most members opposed to borrowing money to fix the capital. State Representative Steve Vaughn argued making debt payments on a $160 million bond issue would be $870,000 a month, and so that decision should be put to a public vote. Let's take it to the people for once and for all, take it to the people to say, you guys, listen, this is our house, we need it fixed, we work for you, take it to them, give them a try before we try to put ourselves in debt to put them into debt. State Representative Doug Cox countered lawmakers should be willing to do what's necessary to take care of the people's house. I don't know about your constituents, but my constituents say, we sent you up there to do a job, we sent you up there to make decisions, don't send ever tough decision back to us to vote. Do your job, fix the Capitol, let's be proud of this building in this state. State Representative Mike Reynolds questioned whether Oklahoma could legally issue bonds without a state referendum. Surely your conscience, in the plain reading of the Constitution, would tell you that if we're going to issue bonds, it has to go to a vote of the people. State Representative Paul Wesselhoff said Oklahoma should avoid bond issues altogether and instead take money out of the general revenue fund to pay for repairs. Maybe $10 million a year, and as we make those uh, debts, pay the bills, we just pay as we go, just like we do it at our home. Why should government be so darn different than what we do at home? State Representative Todd Rust, arguing for the bill, maintained a pay-as-you-go approach is unrealistic. I'd rather pay cash for it myself. I've always believed in that. But there are situations that come up that it makes good sense to, to leverage the, the, the value in the building and the capital improvements that we've got. If you look at the time value of money, we're getting bonds at the cheapest rate probably in the history of this state and maybe the nation. It's phenomenal. Suggestions that lawmakers tap the state's rainy day fund to make repairs were rejected by House author Sky McNeil, who argued that money should be preserved for emergencies. Do you all want to use that for this and then look up and have another tornado, an ice storm, an economic downturn and go, I'd like to help you all, but you'll have to come up here and just huddle up in the Capitol because we spent all your money right here fixing this. While Republicans debated among themselves, House Democrats were united in opposing the measure. House Minority Leader Scott Inman said the issue for his party isn't whether the Capitol should be repaired. Instead, he argued taking on more debt, while bills to lower the state's top income tax rate are moving through the legislature, is fiscally irresponsible. And so those of you who, who think maybe today or tomorrow that we're going to go ahead and vote on another tax cut and you're going to go ahead and sign off on that deal, if you're going to vote for that tax cut, how in the world do you justify voting for this? How do you do it? I can't. I cannot justify that fiscal irresponsibility. The measure was defeated 34 to 62, with all 27 Democrats in attendance voting against the bill. Debate was just as contentious the following day as the House took up a Senate-passed tax cut bill. Senate Bill 1246 would lower Oklahoma's top income tax rate by a quarter of a percent once certain economic triggers are met. A second provision calls for an additional reduction to 4.85 percent if state revenue grows enough to offset losses from the tax cut. State, state Representative state Emily Virgin questioned House author Leslie Osborne about who would primarily that benefit. Most, that 40 percent of families in Oklahoma probably wouldn't see a tax cut and that most of it would go to the wealthiest Oklahomans. Would you believe that? I believe that's a class envy argument, and I believe that this money will equally go back to everybody that pays taxes, be it small businesses, be it individuals. The tax cut is expected to cost about $200 million a year once fully implemented. State Representative James Lockhart was among several Democrats who argued Oklahoma has more urgent needs that should be addressed first before a tax cut is enacted. 
These are my daughter's textbooks. They're 10 years old. Look at them. They're in pieces. We can't even buy textbooks in our schools, and we're going to do this. Bull. Osborne maintained previous tax cuts have led to revenue growth and urged lawmakers to keep one thing in mind. And it's not our money. It is the citizens of Oklahoma's money. It's our job to make sure that we take as little of their hard-earned money as possible to fund the core services of government. Democrats argued even supporters of the tax cut don't believe it will grow revenues enough to fund those core services. Right now going on in this building, there are discussions to raise taxes on gross production taxes in Oklahoma, on the oil and gas industry. Why is that happening? Because the governor knows that with income tax cuts like this, the only way they're going to get any more money to fund all these problems that I've just addressed is to raise taxes on the oil and gas industry. While 12 Republicans joined 28 Democrats in voting against the bill, the measure passed 54 to 40. It now heads to the governor's desk.